Step 2. Forward Fourier Transform. So we have finished a previous step uh, on the note that uh, Fourier series does not really apply to non-periodic functions. So how can we extend our Fourier analysis to the, such functions? There's a very simple trick that we can use. Imagine that we've got a non-periodic function, for example here given by this step function. So it's non-zero only on the interval of minus pi over 2 and uh, pi over 2. So what we do is we can just turn this function into a periodic one with some period t. In this case, the period is given by 2 pi. So we just take this slice from minus pi to pi and we apply it again here and there and there and also on the negative part as well. So we've got a series of uh, um, repeating original functions. This gives us a periodic function. And then what we do is we take this uh, uh, periodic function and we start stretching the period uh, little by little. And you can see that if we stretch it uh, uh, longer and longer, it, it will start to resemble our original function. And in the limit where the period is stretched all the way to infinity, it will be equal to our original function. And we know how to apply Fourier series of periodic functions. So all we have to do is we have to see what happens to the Fourier series as we keep increasing the period of the function. And then in the end, we will recover uh, something that's known as the forward Fourier transform. So let's have a look how it really works mathematically. This is our complex Fourier series, which you all recognize. And we are going to rewrite it in a slightly different way. First, we're going to be, uh, begin with this side here. So we're going to focus on the complex coefficients themselves. And what we do, we start by multiplying both sides by the period of the function. So here we're not really doing anything magical. All we are doing is we are bringing this capital T on this side. And now we're going to look at the individual terms and what happens to them as t goes to infinity. So first we're going to look at the exponential. This omega naught times n. So we know that the fundamental frequency is given by this. Omega naught is 2 pi over capital T. So as t goes to infinity, you can see that this uh, fundamental frequency, it will, it will keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So does that mean that the exponential vanishes? No, it doesn't. Because what we're doing is we are multiplying by this n. And n is an integer ranging from minus infinity all the way to plus infinity. So the product of n times omega naught is still uh, ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity. But as we take that uh, uh, limit of capital T going to infinity, this product, n times omega naught, will become a continuous number, a real number. So we're just going to rewrite it as uh, this. We are going to define a new frequency, a continuous frequency omega, as the product of n times omega naught. Next, let's look at the different portion of our, um, of our uh, equation. And that's this left-hand side product here. Capital T, the period of the function, times uh, Cn, the complex coefficient. We can just define a new term and call it capital F of omega. For now, it doesn't matter why, but you will see uh, why we're doing this a little bit later. And finally, we're going to see what happens to the integral over the period of the function. Well, as we said, the period is keeps getting stretched and stretched all the way to minus infinity and plus infinity, so the range of integration change has to change correspondingly. So this integral over the period of the function goes to integral over the entire uh, interval minus infinity to plus infinity. So let's put all of these things together. This is our initial expression which came from this discrete Fourier series. And as we take, a t, as we take the limit of the period going to infinity, we recover the following expression. We define the product of t uh, times cn as some capital uh, f, uh, which is a function of our new frequency, continuous frequency omega. So f of w omega is equal to the integral of from minus infinity to plus infinity of our initial function times e uh, to the power of minus i omega t. And this is nothing else but the Fourier forward Fourier transform. So a few notes about what this means. One thing is, we haven't covered it, but it's really defined only for absolutely integra integrable functions. 
meaning that if your function satisfies this relationship, in other words, if you take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the modulus of the function, and that's a finite number, then you're good. You can apply your Fourier analysis and you can apply the forward Fourier transform. If not, tough luck, you can't do anything about it. Next, what really happens is here that we are starting with some function in the time domain. It could be your cos function, it could be a delta function, it could be some complicated signal. And what we are doing is we are transforming it into a new function that's defined on the frequency domain. This function, capital F of omega. Remember these omegas, they're continuous frequencies. So the question is, why do we actually want to do that? Why change from one domain to the other? And actually, the reasons are very, very important. Many operations are often much simpler when you go from time domain into the frequency domain, or if you go to, from spatial domain to momentum domain. For example, if you have a very complicated uh, differential equation that's difficult to solve in the time domain, you can Fourier transform it, go into the frequency domain, and solve it there. Why? That's because the time derivatives in the time domain become just multiplication by omega in the frequency domain. So in that way you see that you go from solving a differential equation in the time domain to just solving a normal algebraic uh, equation in the frequency domain. And also if you're doing some signal processing, knowing the frequency components of your time signal becomes very crucial. That allows you to apply some filtering, compression, or whatever, uh, whatever signal processing that you want to do. So that concludes our forward Fourier uh, transform.